It's 4.30 on WKYT this morning. Fayette County school leaders say nine schools have higher levels of radon than they consider acceptable. Find out how schools are planning to tackle the problem. A judge is sentenced to the man who admitted shooting a child in Lexington. What the child's mother had to say after the sentencing. A dog in Menifee County suffered life-changing injuries in an accident. Now the shelter there, hoping her story will inspire others to help. That and much more ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's good to have you on WKYT. As we hit the air this morning, we also have a deadly apartment fire in Winchester. We'll get you the details on that in just a moment. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Michelle Chamberlain in for Rebecca Smith. And it's raining outside. It is, yeah. and a little bit cooler than it has been. But you know, you still get that spring feel. And right. it looks like that continues right out into the weekend where we also have a time change. Let's check in with Micah. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, front's moving through at this very moment. And that's a cool front. Once that passes on through, we'll have cooler temperatures today. But it's not going to be cool outside. It actually feels very nice later on this afternoon in the 60s. We still have some mist out and about. A couple of sprinkles down south, that front trying to push on through. You can see that temperature wise 48 in Covington, 63 in southern Kentucky. So it all depends on where you are this morning. But virtually all of us finish off at least in the 50s this morning. By the afternoon, 62, mostly cloudy skies. So a good afternoon in store. But then we hit the weekend, a cool front now, a warm front for your weekend. I'll show you how high we go with those temperatures coming up. Thank you very much, Micah. We begin with breaking news and a tragic story out of Clark County this morning. We know there has been a deadly apartment fire in Winchester. It happened about 1.30 this morning on Spring Mist Lane that is near Wynn Avenue, and it is just off of North Main Street there in the Clark County seat. Few details have been released, but the Clark County Fire Department confirms that at least two people are dead. Several others are hurt, some critically. We know that Lexington firefighters were called to the scene to help get the fire under control, and the Red Cross is also at the scene. Stay with us on WKYT this morning as we continue to track this story. We have uh, additional video coming in and a, a live reporter at the scene coming up in just a few minutes, and just an awful uh, situation over there. Well, it is a problem that they say needs to be fixed as soon as possible. Fayette County school leaders say nine schools have higher levels of radon than they consider to be acceptable. Radon is a naturally occurring radioactive gas that's associated with health, pro health problems after long-term exposure. WKYT's Monique Blair reports school leaders began laying out a plan to get rid of it. Schools in Kentucky are not mandated to test radon levels, but after finding a higher radon level a year and a half ago at Locust Trace, Fayette County Public Schools decided to test the radon levels at every school and also set their standard the same as the EPA's residential exposure level, which is a four. Uh, during this routine testing, we have discovered that some levels exceed the EPA's recommended threshold. Nine Fayette County Public Schools have tested at a level of four or higher. To provide some comparison, OSHA's permissible exposure limit for the workplace is a level of 100. Uh, we had a high of 15.8, and we had a low of four. It was 15.8. 15.8 was Harrison. Okay. And that's was, one sample. Who was four? Uh, four was uh, Scapa. Now the school board needs to sign off on $570,000 to fix the radon levels. Beginning over spring break and then finishing up in the summer, that money will be used to make various changes at each of those nine schools, whether it be drilling into the foundation or sealing off problem areas. Anything to bring the radon level at each of those nine schools below a level of four. A letter was sent home with students at each of the nine schools Thursday saying, quote, there are health risks associated with prolonged exposure to high levels of on, but please be assured that the levels in our buildings did not approach that level of concern. We're going to make sure that the radon is within, well within the acceptable uh, uh, limits or ranges. In Fayette County, Monique Blair, WKYT. All 66 schools in Fayette County have been tested. Each school will be tested every five years. Also, the Fayette County Board of Education elected Melissa Bacon as its new chair. She was the board's vice chair. Current school board member Amanda Ferguson was elected vice chair. The previous board chair, John Price, died last month. 
after battling cancer. In Simpson County, a sheriff's deputy is recovering this morning after being injured in a shooting. State police say Deputy Eddie Lawson was serving a warrant at a home in Franklin yesterday afternoon when he was shot in the pelvis and knee. They say he returned fire, hitting the suspect in the arm. Police say Lawson was taken to the hospital. They say the suspect, 28-year-old Ben Wyatt, was also taken to the hospital. A judge has sentenced a man who admitted shooting a child in Lexington. Alberto Panita Concheras received a 25 year prison sentence for assault and one endangerment. He fired shots at a family's SUV in Lexington last year. Antonio Murillo, who was nine years old at the time, was shot in the head and badly injured. His mother says he still requires full time care. Now, after yesterday's sentencing, she read a statement to the Lexington Herald leader outside of the courtroom. I do have one question to you, Mr. Contreras, and that is one simple word. Why? <laughs> Why did you do this? Why did you have to take our lives and rip them apart? Why did you hurt my beautiful son? Antonio's family is trying to raise money for a service dog to help him. We have a link to the GoFundMe page at WKYT.com. An employee had to hide in a cooler after police say a man ran into a store and got into a standoff with police. Police say Timothy Caldwell ran into the corner liquor store on Newtown Pike after police tried to make a traffic stop on him. We're told that Caldwell found two guns under the counter before discovering the employee was in the cooler. The store owner says Caldwell eventually passed out in the bathroom, and that's when police arrested him, a story we were reporting to you live this time yesterday morning. Uh, he is now facing 24 charges, including nine counts of wanton endangerment. State health leaders have confirmed Kentucky's first case of the Zika virus. They say the patient recently returned to the Louisville area from a trip to Central America. They say he went to the doctor after developing a rash and fever, then tested positive for Zika. State health leaders say the virus is most often transmitted through mosquitoes, but they say it can also be transmitted through pregnancy, sexual contact, and blood transfusions. Again, we're learning more about the virus, but we know the virus is, is potentially circulating uh, in the blood and other body fluids at the time that people are sick. Doctors say the Kentucky man with Zika will make a full recovery. A Laurel County woman is facing charges after police say she left her four-year-old son home alone. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office arrested 27-year-old Ashley Gray. Deputies say they were called to a parking lot and soon found out the child was home alone. The child is now with other relatives. Deputies say Gray admitted smoking meth. She is charged with wanton endangerment, disorderly conduct, and some other offenses. Investigators think some road sign thefts in Madison County could be connected to the assault of a county highway worker. State police say the worker was putting up a speed limit sign on Meadowbrook Road Tuesday afternoon when someone driving by hit him with a cattle prod. The worker wasn't seriously injured. The Madison County Highway Department says $9,000 worth of road signs have been stolen this year, but investigators cannot catch the thieves. We have recently installed some cameras. Uh, to try to catch license plate numbers or people who are still in the persistent signs. And uh, lately they have even got to the point where they've stolen our cameras. The highway department says they also found a message spray painted on a road that said, quote, it's on. A Northern Kentucky community will be partying this weekend to help rebuild a historic business. The 185 year old Rabbit Hash General Store burned down last month in Boone County. A Cincinnati TV station reports the Rabbit Hash Bash will be held this weekend in Fort Thomas. The money raised will go to help rebuild the store. Just has a fun name to the event, doesn't it? <laughs> sure does. <laughs> and a serious cause as they hope to rebuild up there. Well, she's had a rough life so far. A dog in Menifee County suffered life changing injuries in an accident. But now she has a hard time getting around. And as Garrett Weimer explains, the animal shelter hopes her story will inspire people to help her. You can see it in her eyes. This dog has been through a lot. We had to make a choice last Saturday either euthanize her or take the second leg off. But Renee Nichols didn't give up on Shay. I mean, I just didn't think I could do it, <laughs> to be frank. She's just such a great dog. You know, she, uh, she's loving. She's not. Uh, she likes everybody. Against all odds, Shay hasn't given up either. Yes, I'm a good girl. But for a special dog like Shay. We're committed to it and we're hoping that uh, everybody else wants to help her too. Her friends have much more in mind. We're hoping that uh, we can get her 
uh, a wheelchair so that um, she can motor like she always does. It'll cost them about $650 to get Shay a wheelchair like these from Eddie's Wheels. What the hat dog? It's a lot of money for a shelter like Menifee County's, a county where more than a quarter live in poverty. Actually, her total cost of care is probably, um, you know, uh, a good chunk of the change for the whole year's worth. If we have to do bake sales, we'll do it. <laughs> Whatever it takes. I know people do look at it and say, did you do the right thing? I know they do, but she's such a great dog. Nichols says it's worth it for a dog who has a lot of love to give. She can live a long life, um, and she's just such a special dog. We want to do it for her. In Menifee County. Good girl. Garrett Weimer, WKYT. She definitely is a special dog. That's so oh, impressive. She's able to story. get around. Yeah, and it's great to see people uh, trying to help out, and hopefully more will. Time this morning is uh, coming up on 441. Hey, WKYT, this morning is just getting started on your Friday. Yes, newborns can be exhausting, right? Especially if yours won't stop crying. But there are some resources available for new parents. Moms Every Day has some tips still ahead on WKYT this morning. We still have a few showers down toward the far southern half of our viewing area that will push on out here in the next few hours. And I'm going to talk about what you can expect this afternoon in your weekend planner. Coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. On Defender Radar Network, we are looking outside at a couple of sprinkles, a couple of light showers. Far southern half of our viewing area, that is where our front is located. And let's go southbound across the Howard Rogers Parkway. That's where we're seeing that, kind of that 421 interchange. You're going to be seeing those showers rolling through. Obviously, this is not much, but this is where the rain's located, so I'm going to talk about it. You go all the way to Hazard and work your way into Buckhorn uh, in northern and northwestern portions of Perry County, still dealing with some showers. This area, give it another two to three hours, and it starts to move on out. Once it moves on out, a little mist back behind that is these low clouds try to push on out, but we still have a little time before we start to feel those cooler temperatures slide on in. I'd say by 8 a.m., most of us in the upper 40s, lower 50s, and then we go off toward noontime. Noontime is when everybody really dries some things on out. The mist will be long gone. Mostly cloudy sky stays with us all day long. We'll be toward the afternoon at 62 degrees. That's a good feel. I mean, the snow is 70, 75 degrees like we have been uh, the past few days. But you know what? It's still really nice. Go off into the night and into tomorrow. Things start to change again. Cool front this morning, warm front tomorrow. Watch what happens, okay? We start off in the 40s and 50s. It's not a bad feel. Then we get through the day, okay? You start off in the morning. This is your warm front. It's actually moving northbound, and that's giving us some showers. Possibility of a couple of rumbles of thunder tomorrow morning as well. So if you're going out for your run, if you're heading out, doing whatever errands you have to do, just know you will have at least that chance during the morning to have a, a rain chance there in the forecast. By noontime, that front moves north of us. And what will happen, look at these temperatures. You're talking low to mid 70s. And not only that, but we can't rule out that isolated chance at a couple of rumbles of thunder there toward the afternoon on Saturday. So Saturday is absolutely not a washout. However, we just can't rule out that rain chance. It's about 30, 40%. It's mainly about the temperatures. Temperatures feel great. Then we hit Sunday. It's not about the temperatures on Sunday. Sunday, I wouldn't say a complete washout, but it's pretty close. I mean, we'll have scattered showers and thunderstorms roll across the region, and then we uh, slide off toward Monday, and there's another chance of rain. So that's really the story the next few days. The rain chance is in the forecast, and, and they'll be with us into next week, too. Look at your seven day forecast starting off today. We're in the low to mid 60s with that morning chance, especially southern half of our viewing area. But afternoon, everybody's good to go. Any plans you have going on looks just fine. If you're heading out to eat, maybe going to a restaurant or whatnot to watch the ball game, uh, just know you'll be walking in, in, in dry conditions. Then we hit Saturday, about a 40% chance. Like I said, a couple of rumbles here are possible, but for the most part, it's not the temperature. Sunday, Close to a watch, a washout, but I want you to pay attention late in the work week. Next week, you're talking about a cool shot of air. 40s there for highs. Well, so we're not we're not settled no. in the 60s and 70s. That's coming back. That time change coming so early this oh, year. Yeah. You know yeah, that's yeah, tomorrow yeah. night. So everybody uh, bear that in mind. That's right. 4:47 our time. Newborns cry a lot. It's part of life, but sometimes it can be excessive. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you so. are well aware. <laughs> and that's when it can be a real problem for parents. Luckily, there is support. Here's more in today's Mom's Everyday Minute. Home a new 
newborn, it's exciting and challenging. When that baby is particularly fussy, a whole new set of challenges arise. Well, the good news is that there's help for parents who want to cry because of a newborn that won't stop crying. The Fussy Baby Network is comprised of experts in childhood development who know about the latest research on infant crying and feeding issues. All it takes is a phone call and specialists will listen to your concerns. They'll provide support and help you find ways to help your baby. The service is free and available in English and Spanish. The number is 888-431-BABY. Now you can call if you have concerns about your baby's crying, think your baby has colic, have questions about your baby's development, or just overwhelmed and need someone to talk to. For more ways to make mom's life easier, visit momseveryday.com. For these tips and more, just go to WKYT.com and click on Moms Every Day. We also have all the latest news right there for you and the weather forecast. And uh, stay with us through the weekend for the Kentucky Wildcats. No, I said through the weekend. We know they're going to get <laughs> That's all the hope, through the right? weekend. That's the hope, right? Through the weekend. All right, 448 on WKYT this morning, and we have a lot more news coming up for you. That's right. The next major contest is just a few days away for presidential candidates, and it could make or break some campaigns. We'll take a look at the latest on the campaign ahead on WKYT This Morning. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT This Morning. Hey, welcome back and good morning to you. It is uh, coming up on 452 on your Friday morning. Just like the sound of that, right? Friday, Friday morning. Right. Everyone loves that. <laughs> well, with the uh, major contest that's uh, coming up just a few days away in the presidential race, GOP candidates took advantage of one of their last chances to reach voters. Our Washington Bureau correspondent Alex Miller gives us a look at the debate and what the tone said about the direction of the campaign. Last night's debate, arguably the most substantive yet, likely because many of these candidates are realizing the next few days are do or die. The personal attacks were few and far between. Last night's debate hit the most talked about topics, from Common Core to the economy to Israel. When you have only four people on the stage, each candidate gets more time. But frankly, last time, there were only a handful of people on the stage too and it wasn't very peaceful. But this time it was clear something has changed. The next round of votes could make or break at least half of the campaigns. I think voters are saying, you know what? Enough with this. These are serious times. We got real issues in our lives. If you want to be our president? You need to tell us what you're going to do for us. Carly Fiorina has announced her support for Ted Cruz. She told me that while she won't tell the other candidates to drop out or voters to switch their picks, she wants to make sure Donald Trump is not the nominee. I don't think he represents our party, and I don't want him representing me. But we're going to have to beat him fair and square. Colorado Senator Cory Gardner says Marco Rubio is the only candidate who can go toe to toe with Hillary Clinton. And look, tonight you saw a statesman. You saw somebody who's prepared on the issues, who's substantive about the debate. There will be five states voting in Tuesday's contest, including must win Florida for Marco Rubio and must win Ohio for John Kasich. Reporting at the University of Miami, I'm Alex. Miller. Okay, we'll see how it goes. A big day coming up uh, Tuesday in the race. It is 4.53 right now. WKYT this morning on the air with all the latest. And in just a moment, a look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. Yeah, and we'll have another look at your morning forecast coming up. Hey, good morning. Welcome back in. The time this morning is 4.57 on WKYT. Yeah, and it's time to take a look at some of the stories we're working on this morning. And our lead story right now is a tragedy. Uh, it's out of Winchester. There has been a deadly apartment fire on Spring Mist Lane. We'll be at the scene with the latest coming up, but we have confirmed two fatalities there, at least others injured. Stay with us throughout the morning on WKYT as we keep this story updated for you. Well, a little bit of a... Uh, Soggy start to yeah. the Friday out there. Just, you know, a little drizzle here and there, right? Put on a hat or yeah. carry an umbrella. Micah, what's the weekend looking like? Yeah, the weekend looks a little bit better in terms of temperatures. Today we'll be in the lower 60s. That front's moving through, but you know what? The warm front heads northbound tomorrow. That'll bring warm temperatures and a little bit more rain. I'm going to talk all about that coming up in just a few minutes. <laughs> 